Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about uh, evaluation of the immobilization of enzymes. Evaluation of immobilization of enzymes. In our previous lecture, we discussed about the different general design considerations for the immobilization process in which uh, one thing was left over was uh, one point I missed out that was about the support. So uh, a final point about the support must also be added in that lecture and which I will be editing later but for now, as for now, you can add that point about support. I have discussed about the support throughout the lecture. So all those points can be accumulated in one single point of support, in one single heading of support. So <clears throat> for evaluation of the immobilization process, now, uh, we must know what we have uh, done in the immobilization process. <clears throat> so in the immobilization process, we had a solution of enzymes. Based upon the method of immobilization, we had the concerned support or the concerned medium in which we will be immobilizing. So I will take the example of supports here. Okay, this is our carrier in which we are going to immobilize the enzyme. Okay, so we will be contacting the enzyme with our, with our carrier. So after a uh, certain incubation, <coughs> we will get our final product, we will get our immobilized enzymes. Now how to evaluate these immobilized enzymes? Since we were immobilizing our uh, enzymes, so the prime function of the enzyme was the biocatalysis, the, the, the catalysis uh, reaction. So we will study the immobilized enzyme uh, as for its catalytic activity. So we will measure the enzymatic activity in the immobilized enzyme and we will see how much uh, enzyme we had provided for immobilization. So we will uh, we'll study, we will evaluate what is enzyme activity of the contacted enzyme. Okay, this is enzyme activity. of the contacted enzyme and we will study the enzyme activity the enzyme activity of immobilized enzyme. Okay. So our <coughs> yield of enzyme immobilized in, uh, so our yield for the immobilization process, the enzyme immobilization yield the enzyme immobilization yield would be our output that is the immobilized enzyme activity and the amount of enzyme we contacted with the support that what initial concentration of enzymes we took upon the final product that is the immobilized enzyme and its activity
Thank you. So the enzyme activity we will obtain after immobilization will be our final result of the immobilization process. <clears throat> now to get a better picture, a better insight as uh, to what uh, the immobilized enzyme activity is about and is it accord in accordance with the free enzyme or, or has it uh, been altered. So for this we can have uh, another type of yield which is called as a protein immobilization yield. Protein immobilization yield which, which, can, which we can write as YP and it will be the protein content immobilized upon the protein content contacted. Now how can we know what protein has been immobilized? Because since the protein, protein is on immobilized on the carrier, so how can we estimate it? So for a simple method to estimate it is by by estimating the residual protein content the residual protein content after or in the spent medium in the spent medium of the immobilization process so the protein content we get in the uh, spent medium of the immobilization process will tell us about how, may, how much protein has not been immobilized. So to get, to get the idea of how much protein has been immobilized, we can subtract this value, this residual protein content value from the contacted protein. So we will obtain how much protein has been immobilized. So this can, this yield can be calculated by using this method. Okay, because immobilized protein cannot be directly calculated. Now when we get an idea of uh, how much protein has been uh, immobilized and what enzyme activity this immobilized protein is giving. So we can have, uh, by comparing this same picture with that of the free enzyme, that the same amount of protein in case of free enzyme will have a different enzyme activity and this enzyme activity could be less or even more. So if the immobilized enzyme activity is more than the immobilized protein relative to the free enzyme then that means that our immobilization process have enhanced the have enhanced the contacting uh, the collision of the substrate with the enzyme by any means it has enhanced it either by uh, the influence on the structure or by uh, because of the support we have chosen uh, because of any of the reasons it has influenced the enzyme activity it has influenced the performance of the enzyme and in the same way if you have a low if at uh, what protein content we are getting is lower and at that lower protein concentration we are getting uh, more enzyme activity then this also means that the immobilization process has a positive influence over our enzymatic activity 
so this uh, gives us a better picture of the immobilization process now uh, there is another very important parameter that is uh, described in case of immobilization and that is uh, specific activity mass specific activity or volumetric specific activity and it is the enzyme activity per unit mass of the support or the the final end product of uh, immobilization mass of it or the volume of it okay so if i want to write that parameter out that would be mass specific activity and we can write as a, uh, write it as specific activity and that would be enzyme activity per unit mass of support okay enzyme activity per unit mass of the end product of immobilization okay similarly this can be also in terms of volume in that case we will write it as volumetric specific activity and this would become as immobilized enzyme activity of immobilized enzyme per unit volume of the final end product of the immobilization process okay. so these parameters are the total essential parameters that are evaluated uh, after the immobilization process and we can determine the protein load loaded onto the enzyme uh, as we have discussed earlier that how much protein has been immobilized so we can uh, determine the total load or uh, protein load by subtracting the residual protein from the contacted protein okay so so all these parameters are all that uh, are involved and uh, to remind you once again enzyme loaded is also a, we can write it as enzyme loaded some in some places they call it as enzyme loaded onto the support so this enzyme load or enzyme loaded on the support is equivalent to the activity or enzyme activity immobilized enzyme activity and similarly protein immobilized is the is also called as protein load in the process okay so i hope uh, now everything is clear to you so we will now discuss about the optimization of the immobilization process and it is also this uh, the optimization is also a part of the general design considerations so optimization of immobilization in this we target just the two basic uh, evaluation parameters and those are 
the enzyme immobilization yield enzyme immobilization yield ye and the mass or volumetric volumetric specific activity specific activity okay these are the two primary important parameters that we optimize and of course there is another important parameter that is cost cost of the end product end product here the end product is immobilized enzyme okay so these are the three prime parameters that we need to focus on optimization any model that includes these three parameters and uh, we have a certain sort of uh, currently we, we are facing challenge we face challenge in optimizing it because uh, if we have a better enzyme immobilization yield then uh, it results somehow into decrease in specific activity of the end product so uh, this has been optimized for uh, many enzymes and we have uh, a mediocre value and similarly including the cost also is a very a very good option because uh, at the end cost is what matters at uh, larger at larger scales so the cost as well as uh, other small parameters is the stability of the enzyme stability or we can call it as operational stability that when we perform the function of the enzyme it is it should be durable it means the 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 immobilized enzyme should be durable and it should work for longer duration of time okay so if uh, stability is enhanced that is a uh, stronger immobilized enzymes are formed uh, without any enzyme leakage so it might influence the enzyme activity and even uh, at the end the volumetric specific activity so that is why this is a challenge in keeping uh, stability or volumetric specific activity at uh, at an acceptable uh, value along with uh, getting a good immobilization enzyme immobilization yield so this is what is required in the optimization process and uh, in in the optimization process we can change the support the method of immobilization uh, we can switch from adsorption to uh, covalent binding or all together onto membrane based systems or gel based systems uh, encapsulation uh, ultra filtration or we can simply uh, go uh, for uh, carrier carrier free based methods of cross linked enzyme crystals or cross linked enzyme aggregates so whatever the case might be these are the process uh, these are the uh, parameters which uh, needs to be optimized and must be focused on Okay. So in next lecture we will be dealing with uh, we will start with the kinetics of heterogeneous enzymatic reactions of immobilized enzymes for immobilized enzymes and we will see what uh, are the different types of effects like the micro environment effect and the micro environment effect that affects the kinetics of the enzymes okay thank you